Hello, hello everyone. It's Stray Faye here with another episode of Cupid Parasite. I did actually want to do like a mini LP in between uh, Raul's route and Alan's route, but um, yeah, Alan's route starting off pretty strong. Uh, we just got to the beginning of Alan's route We're in chapter one. Did the prologue to get to this point. And yeah, the, the first chapter, the angel demon face-off is starting with a little bit of a, a flashback, I guess, to 21 years ago to the underworld. So I am I am intrigued. They have they have grabbed my attention. So let's start. 21 years ago, the underworld. Not this one. Not this one either. Ah, here we go. I've finally figured out how to proceed. What you reading, Alan? Sounds, sounds like he's turning pages of a book. At long last, I can take away Cupid's bow. Oh, okay. After Lynette. I mean, it was revealed in Kill's Route that he was, he was trying to nab the artifact, but he failed in that route. Alright, well, back to Lynette's perspective. Well, back to business as usual. After the finale of Parasite House. Each of the Parasite 5 had cancelled their membership, so I was looking over their profile sheets one last time. Wonder what happened to Alan? I hadn't heard from him at all. He cancelled his membership without a consultation or even letting me know directly. Hmm. I wonder if he wrote down a reason for why he decided to leave. On the cancellation form, there's a box for them to fill in their reasons if they want. Uh, I pulled up the form to take a look and I could hardly believe what I saw. Terminated due to a violation of contract terms and conditions. Uh, did he come on to a woman too strong? Terminated due to violation of... What the heck? What does he mean? What does that mean? Wait, does that mean he actually... What? <laughs> Based on his past behavior, I had to imagine it must have been something pretty bad. But there weren't any further details, so I decided to go talk to the co-worker who had handled his termination process. And Lynette's like, okay. What's going on? Is, is this a lawsuit? Um, excuse me. I was hoping you could tell me what happened with this. I handed her a printout of the form and her face immediately turned sour. Bridal advisor A. Ugh, Alan Melville. Do you have any idea how much trouble that little shit has caused us? He's been messing with our other members. For an advisor to refer to a member with that kind of language. Whatever he did, it must have been pretty bad. According to her, this is what happened. We'd set up a number of couples who were just about to enter into serious relationships, but one after another, they all broke up. And the reason for that was Alan Melville. He went from woman to woman, asking them each out on a date, and one by one they agreed. Once you start a formal relationship, you can't date other members. It's company policy. Guess they saw it as one final test. But in every case, the woman said she'd fallen in love with him and called off their previous connections. <laughs> Just destroying their business. But for his part, Alan refused to go out with any of the women again. He just wanted one and done. Once he fell in love with them, he wasn't interested anymore because it wasn't it wasn't sharing. He was he didn't want to be exclusive. So both the men and women ended up with broken hearts, and the relationships fell apart, and all the women left the company. What? They all canceled their memberships? They sure dead. And they all said the same thing. I had an incredible dream. I'll never forget it. They also said weird stuff like, I'd rather live in a dream than deal with a real man. A real man? 
I guess in the end they didn't actually want to marry Alan either. Honestly, none of it makes much sense. Okay, so they had dreams. That kind of... That kind of runs some parallels of what, like, happened with... With Gil? Like, Clarus was like... It seems like Clarus is inducing dreams of him and Lynette, which actually causes his love to burn even brighter. <laughs> Either way, after he dated all those women one after another, I went to my supervisor and petitioned to get him kicked out. I see. And it's ruining their numbers. After the giant headache he'd caused everyone, all I could do was sigh. I think I understand now. Thank you for dealing with all that trouble. That's our jobs as advisors, right? Sometimes you just get a toxic member like that. All pain and no pleasure, am I right? But he never caused this much trouble before Parasite House, you know? Why would he suddenly go on a dating spree like that? Oh well, he's gone now. Just put him in the past and don't give it another thought. Yeah. I sighed again and returned to my desk. Of course, waiting there to welcome me back was the same profile sheet of Alan's. <laughs> it's actually been a while since I've like, actually read this before. <laughs> it's like everything's super vague. Hometown, don't remember. I guess he doesn't want to write the underworld as his hometown. In your dreams. No idea. Surprised he knows his birthday. <laughs> it's like, do, do demons have birthdays? Or is it the day they come into existence? Damn it! I can't believe how many women he screwed over! And right before they wound up in serious relationships! He ba he was basically a keep its worst nightmare. Wonder how many happy couples there'd be right now if it weren't for him. I recalled that smug look on his face when he'd called someone our darling and felt anger rising up in me again. I need to talk to him about this. I don't want to ever have to deal with something like this again. He might not be a member of Cupid Corp anymore, but I still wanted him to reconsider his perspective on dating. <laughs> now, you're just, now you're just meddling. My co-workers always told me not to feel so responsible, but all I could see was a future without marriage thanks to him. I really hope I can find a way to meet up again somehow. Why does he have to steal from other men? Now that he wasn't a client, I could ask everything that was off limits before. I wouldn't have to hold anything back. Just then, the phone began to chime. The special type of ring told me it was an outside call. Who could that be? Hello, this is Miss Mir. Uh, the manager. Uh, is this the same manager from Rolls Route? Uh, hello there. This is the property manager of Parasite House. Do you have a second? Okay, it's not the same manager. <laughs> This is property manager versus Raul's manager. <laughs> Frankly, this is a complete surprise. Oh, yes, of course. How can I help you? Is there a problem or... For a second, I was worried we might have damaged something dur during our stay there, but his tone was quite relaxed. Uh, not at all. <laughs> Just changed his voice. Actually, it looks like someone left a pillow behind. I contacted your CEO and he told me I should talk to you. Okay, we got- we got have a reason to talk to Alan. <laughs> but for like a pillow? I guess a pillow is like a little bit more expensive than say like a toothbrush or something that you just like toss out, but... A pillow? It had to be one of Alan's. Ah, I see. If you don't mind, I can come by later and pick it up. Then I can return it to the owner myself. Uh, I'd really appreciate that. Just let me know a time that's good for you and I'll meet you at the house. We agreed on a time for me to stop by and I hung up the phone. I'd just been hoping for an excuse to talk to Alan again, so this was perfect timing. As a bridal advisor and as a literal god of love, I simply couldn't tolerate the stealing of partners. Made up my mind to confront Alan and began preparing a list of talking points. <laughs> this is meddling too much. I mean, he's already... He's already kind of checked out of, like, everything. He didn't meddle too much, I feel like, in the other routes either. 
The girl only really saw him in Gil's route, but may maybe he's like working in the shadows regardless. Like how Claris was and I guess Minerva was trying to pull strings too to make us fall in love. A few days later. After work, I headed for the subway to take me to Alan's store on 9th Avenue. It turned out I was right. The forgotten pillow did belong to Alan. That was what... That's what was in the paper bag I was currently clutching. While I was walking to the subway, I took a look at my phone. Huh? What's this? An article has started trending. Urban Legends of Los York. I started reading it. One of the legends they mentioned was that women in the city had started having strange erotic dreams. <laughs> and people are just writing about it. <laughs> Said that the women had started breaking up with their partners because their dreams were too good. A strange urban legend. I wonder if Alan's involved. <laughs> I can't see why people would start breaking up just because of some weird dreams. I was puzzled, but I just moved on to my daily routine of checking out the hashtag Cupid hashtag. After a while, I arrived at Alan's store, Pillow Luxuria. I hadn't been there since our practice date. I probably should have told him I was coming, but I didn't want him to weasel out of this. I was hoping to catch him during the store's business hours. Okay, here I go! Hi, surprise! I slowly opened the door and nervously peeked into the store. I spotted Alan helping out a customer. <laughs> I love the bad boy music they have for Alan. It seems like each of the characters have like a theme song. <laughs> there we got Alan's little bad boy goth music. Next, I need to check your height. So just relax your body and stare straight up at the ceiling. Famous lady customer like this. Perfect. Imagine being wrapped in a cocoon. Relax your breathing. Embrace the pleasant sensation of floating away. The woman was lying on one of the beds in the store. She must have been there for a pillow fitting. <laughs> Never heard of a pillow fitting before, but... Now then, just keep your eyes closed and you'll have the most wonderful dream. A dream? Ah, uh, yes, I am getting kind of sleepy. Alan snapped his fingers and she went perfectly still. As if all her energy had been sapped away. She was she was fast asleep. <laughs> oh boy, he has like hypnotic powers. What the? Is that some kind of hypnosis? Just as I was getting ready to lean in for a closer look, the strangest thing happened. Uh oh. Thank you. Oh What? Alan's eyes became two tiny fires, and a long tail flicked into existence. Wind whipped around him and ra <laughs> wind whipped around him, rattling the windows. Okay, is Lynette just gonna find out he's a like a freaking incubus like first thing? I guess that that'll stop some of the misunderstandings. I guess I, I thought maybe it would take a take her a while to figure it out because he's like super naive about everything. What on earth? My hand went to my mouth at the sight of what was clearly something other than human. Is Alan some kind of god? The way his eyes lit up reminded me of how my dad looked when he reached for his axe in anger. Even I did something similar when I used my cupid's bow. I would sprout, sprout feathers and start to glow. What was happening to Alan is exactly what would happen if a god were using their powers. Suddenly, Alan leaned directly over the woman. Huh? And then, he thrusts his hand into her body! Did it take a look? It looks like he has long hair, too. It's just kind of, uh, faded. Well, to be more precise, he thrusts his hand into some kind of fog that had begun to gather around her. 
and in the next moment his entire body disappeared into that same fog. What the? I just stood there completely dumbfounded. I had absolutely no idea what was going on, Lynn. It's like, my... <laughs> I mean, naturally, it's probably not her job to stop this, but like, you can just let this happen. I don't know how much time passed, but eventually he re emerged from the fog. He slowly licked his lips, then snapped his fingers again. With that, his tail disappeared, and the fog hanging over the woman began to dissipate. Like, using some sort of, like, dream eater attack or something. Hmm. The next moment, the apparent customer stirred and gave a big, long stretch. Then she slowly raised herself up. I can't quite recall it, but I just had the most wonderful dream. All my stress seems to have melted away. Okay, well, she seems okay. <laughs> Doesn't seem to remember it. She probably had, I don't know, probably one of those, those sexy dreams. This pillow really is something else. I had no idea it could restore so much energy. I'll take it. I do so appreciate your patronage. The woman happily paid for her pillow and left the store. Once she was gone, I made my way to, into the store. <laughs> Were we just like peeking from outside? <laughs> Alan, what the hell was that? When he saw me, Alan's eyes went wide for the briefest moment, but he quickly caught himself and returned to normal. Ah, so good to see you again, our darling. And how is the most beautiful bridal advisor I know? You know, we just got in a new line of pillows I think you would love. If you'd like, we can... Don't try and change the subject. Seriously, what the hell did I just witness? What do you mean? I was just doing my job. You're not talking your way out of this one. I saw everything. I saw you go inside that woman. All right. <laughs> In context. Going inside her means something totally different. His face changed again. His eye... He, his eyes show something not quite alarm, not quite melancholy, but something in between. He quickly recomposed himself again, then just smiled and shrugged his shoulders. Is that right? How odd. I thought I'd put up an interference field as usual to keep anyone from seeing me. Then he looked at me with the most bewitching smile. Uh oh, you're in trouble. Lynette, run. But you saw what you saw. The truth is, I'm a... A god! You're a god, aren't you? Wait. Huh? <laughs> okay, th I think she's off the mark. Uh, but she, she's close in the way that he's like supernatural. <laughs> Lost in the excitement of beating my first god in the human realm, I rushed up to Alan. Oh no, she's gonna be like, one of my people. Oh, hi Alan. Maybe the other gods had decided to check out the world of man, or maybe some had given some specific orders. Whatever the case may be, this is my first time seeing another god down here. The truth is, I'm a god too. Can you tell? So what's your real name? Your divine name, I mean. Okay, she's just like, hi friend. <laughs> That's not the reaction I was expecting. I had the same excited energy I got when I talked to Claire sometimes, but I was so happy I just couldn't hold back. Uh... Well... I'm actually Cupid. I'm not part of the Deconsentis, of course, so you probably haven't heard of me. <laughs> okay, Lynette, you're just spilling all the beans! Taking a sip. Come on, you're from Celestia, right? What god are you? I just stared at him, hoping he wasn't like the god of robbery or something. After a moment, Alan burst out laughing. Me? A god? <laughs> Boy, you're really something else. Huh? But you are a god, aren't you? No mere mortal can do something like that. You honestly think that any being who can do something like this must be a god? But, isn't that right? 
I mean, of course I've read about things like psychics and stuff, but I've never met one personally. I just thought maybe you were a god that was taking a little trip down here from Celestia or something. I mean, that's what I'm doing. If my aunt or mom were down here with us, they'd probably describe me as a kind of psychic. Wow. So Miss Cupid here has been so sheltered, so coddled, she doesn't even know about the mere existence of demons. Somehow it sounded like he was mocking himself more than me. He looked at me with anger in his eyes. A demon? A being that exists to corrupt humans. Unlike your gods, they're completely evil. Oh, I mean, the gods have done evil things as well, but... Alan took my hand and put his arms around my waist. It was as if he was about to start dancing. Uh-oh. I'm an incubus. I'm nothing like you and your gods. In fact, I'm the complete opposite. Incubus? Demon? I'd heard the word demon before. Mostly in the movies I'd seen. Sometimes it was even a part of the title. But I didn't really know what it actually meant. To be honest, it never occurred to me to look into it. I can't say I'm surprised. Your gods are so self-absorbed. They refuse to even acknowledge our existence. A demon is an evil being that feeds off humans. Even the gods underestimate us at their peril. Okay. <laughs> Alan, Alan, not friend. Run, run, Lynette. In one smooth motion, he turned me in his arms and pushed me onto the bed. Again, like a bit of a choreographed dance. Uh-oh. Oh, oh, hello. Um. Okay, we doing this now. An incubus is specifically a demon that feasts on the dreams of humans. Dreams? Lynette. The <laughs> Aren't you a little worried? Uh, this CG looks really nice, though. He's, he's already... The facade, the the facade of being a human is already breaking. We're like 20 minutes in. Alan glared at me with his glowing eyes. That's right. To me, these humans you seem to love so much are nothing more than food. And the dreams of a woman in love are the tastiest of all meals. That is why I steal. The gods consider themselves givers, but not me. I take. I torment. I'm despised by the gods and their disciples. You know, I can't help but wonder, what might the dreams of a god taste like? Alan? <laughs> Lynette? It was clear I'd said something to make Alan angry, but I couldn't imagine what it, what it might have been. Uh, he might have a bone to pick with some of the gods, I'm guessing? I didn't know anything about demons and didn't have the slightest clue what he was talking about in that moment. He takes instead of gives? That what was that what was meant to explain why he steals women? I guess it's I guess he could just say it's his nature. What does that mean? He feasts on dreams? Apparently, he noticed that my head was swirling with questions. He tapped me lightly on the chest. I noticed his fingernails were longer than before. He kind of has those, those miser nails. He, look, he looks like miser, kind of. Even in a situation like this, it doesn't even occur to you to run away, does it? I am displeased. Perhaps I should just show you the power of an incubus directly. Would it even be bleh, would it even more effective on the god of love? I wonder. Suddenly the wind began whipping around the two of us. The windows began to shake and shudder again. Lynette, are you gonna do something? <laughs> you said you could take care of yourself. You're just like, hmm, what's going on? Alan's eyes are ferocious. Maybe you don't understand the true horror of a demon just yet, but you will. I'll make sure of it. His burning eyes seem to stare into me. 
At first, I thought they were filled with anger, but... Why did it feel like he was about to cry? I tried forming the question, but my lips wouldn't move. Then the world started to fade as if I'd been drugged. Alright, time for a nappy nap! Are we gonna have an erotic dream? Uh... Who dis? I'm, I'm gonna say it's Alan. Come then. Come to me. A voice sweeter than honey called out to me. A warm hand caressed my bare skin. Before I realized it, my clothes had disappeared. <laughs> like magic. Where am I? Who are you? I wanted to say so much, but my body was so light, so elusive, I was completely helpless. Little by little, he touched me, exploring my body. Wow, you're much bolder in your dreams than I would have imagined. What was I feeling? Did it tickle? I didn't recognize this, the sensation at all. I felt like I was losing my mind. Does it feel good? I hope so. Did it feel good? Or did it just tickle? I had no idea. I was wrapped in a warm dream, a cocoon, waiting to hatch. A voice escaped my lips. Just relax and surrender yourself to me. I was eager to do as he said. Eventually, I accepted him. Good girl. I felt full, and I cried out. <clears throat> oh my. <laughs> what is this? Is this what happens between lovers? But it wasn't anything like what I'd seen in the, my movies. It felt more mysterious, more magical. Is this a dream? I was so happy. My heart felt full, and I felt like I was lost in a memory. Who are you? I reached out in desperation and clung to him. Stuck in my dream unlike any I've ever experienced. For the first time in my life, I felt completely satisfied, down to the very depths of my soul. Once I- okay, Alice's perspective. Once I finished feasting, I made my way out of her dream and let out a deep sigh. What a dream. I've never tasted anything so sweet. Was it because she was a god? It was unlike any dreams I've ever devoured before. What did you dream about? Who were you with? Put my hand on her sleeping cheek and muttered quietly to myself. An incubus comes to his target in her dreams, taking the form of her uh, ideal man. But in that moment, I have no way of knowing who I am or what I look like. I just instinctively know that they want me what they want me to say. I whisper sweet words to them and embrace them according to their true desires. That's how an incubus like me feeds. The more pleasure I can provide, the better my feast will be. But binding her in a dream and coming to her as a stranger brings with it a tremendous sense of guilt. Can't believe a demon ate a god's dream. Can't believe such an unworthy being as me would dare embrace her. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought he was angry at her. Why is he feeling guilt? Even in a dream, it shouldn't be allowed. Is it really okay for an incubus to consume the dreams of Cupid? I wondered if it might give me a stomach ache later, and if she would be okay. What the hell am I thinking? I'm not some foolish human. I guess being here for too long can get your senses all mixed up. Mm -hmm. She slept so peacefully. She must have been having an especially nice dream. You really are a good sleeper, huh? 
You're just as unguarded now as you were during Parasite House. I laugh, but there is no genuine, genuine humor in it. Confronted by man or demon, she had absolutely no sense of self-preservation. She wasn't truly conscious of being a god, really. Or being a woman. What a troublesome Cupid. That's why I want to protect you. I know we shouldn't be around each other, but... At least now she would understand. She'd see just how, how much of a danger I was to her. She had Gil and Shelby. So many men who might be worthy of her. All I had to do was work behind the scenes to make her aware of them. Just like I'd been doing this entire time. Of course it hasn't worked so far. Okay, this is a little, hmm, this is a little interesting. What is Alan's relationship with Lynette? Like, why is he doing this? Normally, my target would start waking up as soon as I left her dream, but there is no sign of waking this time. I need to close the store, so I guess I'll take her up to my room for now. I locked the door, then took her in my arms. I carried her upstairs to my bed. Oh, next chapter. I think I'll do another chapter. <laughs> Incubus's job. Or incubi. I think it's technically it's one Incubus. <laughs> Did she sleep over? <laughs> She had a heavy sleep. All right, in Alan's Alan's room. I think we saw this before. It's like so much clutter in here, so much stuff. Hmm. I woke up feeling surprisingly refreshed. I couldn't remember the last time I'd slept so well, but it was more than that. That was the first dream I've ever had. In Celestia, I didn't actually have to sleep, and even in the human realm, I I never dreamed when I slept. Wait, really? <laughs> so for the very first time in my life, I had a dream. I sat up and stretched. It took me a second to realize I didn't recognize the room I was in. Also, those are some very fuzzy blankets. Uh, are those like fur? I feel like sleeping on fur would get like very hot. Huh? Where am I? Good morning, sleepyhead. Finally awake, I see. As he spoke, Alan seemed to materialize from out of nowhere. Seeing him brought back the memory of what happened last night. That's right. Alan is the reason I had that dream. A demon that devours dreams. A dream brought to me by an incubus. So... Do you finally understand the power of an incubus? Yes, it was amazing! Uh... Huh? <laughs> that's, that's right, Alan, huh? Oh no, she's, she's not getting it. She's like, wow. I guess she's more curious than anything. It's like, ooh, new experience. Dreams are truly wonderful, aren't they? Thank you so much for showing me. Since I'm a goddess, I've never actually dreamed before. It's shocking just how incredible it felt. Uh, well... A dream from an incubus isn't exactly the same as a normal dream, you know. Really? To be honest, I meant for you to feel afraid. To feel like you were in danger. He sighed sadly, he's like... <laughs> Luna was completely vulnerable, completely at the mercy of his whims, and she's like, wow, cool. Suddenly, Alan pushed me back down on the bed. So, who appeared in this dream of yours? Huh? Was it Gil? Shelby? Maybe Raul or Ryuki? Or was it someone else entirely? No, none of them. Actually, it was someone I'd never seen before. Someone you've never seen? How strange. The whole point is it's supposed to be someone you know. Hmm. He had kind of a gentle vibe. His hair was blonde and 
He had wings, I think. Uh. Oh, what's that reaction? Alan started to tremble and his gaze turned cold. A sense of anger flickered in his eyes and his smile was tinged with misery. Hmm. I see. Huh? I felt his hand move and suddenly it was covering my eyes. He forced my hand my hands onto my head and pinned them there with a single arm. Okay, coming on to me, coming on to Lynette again. That was that's a very bad dream indeed. I guess I'll just have to fix it. What? Things are moving very fast. I felt something wet and hot crawling up and down my neck. It had to be Alan's tongue. Okay. All right, now he's being slimy. <laughs> what are you? Shut up and think about Gil. Imagine his tongue. What? I wanted to say more, but I was struck speechless when I heard Gil's voice. Oh, is he like impersonating? Uh, oh god, this is gonna be weird. Alan, Alan with Gil's voice, okay. Hey, so what do you really think of me? I've always had a thing for you, you know? Ever since we lived together. That's seriously Gil's voice! There's no mistaking it. I was alone here with Alan, and yet... Still, with his hand covering my eyes, I can almost imagine being there instead. He could, he could be anyone you want. <laughs> He's like the, the ditto. The ditto of uh, this world. Just transform into anything. I want you to look at me. I want you to become a Lovecraft. So, will you be my wife? While whispering sweetly of love, he slowly runs his tongue down my neck and over my shoulders. This is not how Gil would would act, though. Gil would not do this. Before I knew it, the hand I thought was holding my wrist was suddenly touching my thigh. The movement of his fingers is driving me over the edge. Wait! I tried to shake him off, but he refused to let me go. No, I won't wait anymore. I love you. I always have. I want to be your one and only to protect you for the rest of your life. You might have had Gil's voice, but Gil wouldn't have acted anything like this. He's had Sully continue his journey upwards. It's a little, a little, a little weird, isn't it? Like, like, this ruins your image of Gil. No, that's enough. This isn't a dream, and you aren't Gil. I kicked my feet as, up as hard as I could. Gw Finally, I regained my vision. I quickly sat up. Alan was doubled over in front of me, his hands on his crotch. Oh, okay, we went we went directly for the, the family jewels. <laughs> Why did you do that? That's every guy's weak spot. Okay, I guess, I guess, I guess an incubus has that too. It's not like it, that was my intent. I couldn't see anything, so I just kicked out as hard as I could. You only have yourself to blame, you know. I'm a demon. It's my job to tempt people. But, but why did you have to use Gil's voice of all people? I was just trying to be a Cupid in my own way. With a grin, Alan licked his lips. It sounded like he was trying to use some perverted version of matchmaking in order to devour another delicious dream. I won't let that slide. Cupid doesn't play awful tricks like that. Really? It all seems pretty similar to me. No, that's not... Interrupting me, Alan put a hand on my chin and raised my head up. I was frozen in place, like a frog being hypnotized by a snake's cold stare. So, now do you understand just how terrifying us demons are? Demons are supposed to be... scary? <laughs> you, know, you don't realize how naive she is. <laughs> <She's> <laughs> Alan's gonna just get hit hit by confusion damage here. 
For one thing, I can mimic voices. Greater demons can even alter their appearance. That's why it's so easy for us to fool people and feed on their dreams. Of course, some of us do much worse. You should consider yourself lucky. Not all Incubi are as nice as I am. You? Nice? How the heck are you nice? If a really bad demon got his hands on you, he wouldn't stop at just taking your dreams. Trust me, I'm an angel in comparison. If you ever run into another Incubus, or any other demon besides me, my advice to you would be to run the other way. Just because a dream feels good in the moment, that doesn't mean it's actually a good thing. Understand? I blinked in confusion at how seriously he'd become all of a sudden. That nasty bewitching light that had consumed his eyes earlier was gone, and he looked at me with genuine concern. The hand that was that the, the hand that had been gripping my chin tightly was now gently caressing my cheek. Huh? The way he was touching my cheek, it felt like a sensation I'd experienced before. Of course, Alan had touched me in a teasing way a few times, but this wasn't like that. It was a gesture of sincere concern that I had a vague memory of. But when could something like that have happened? It felt like a long, long time ago. Who could have shown me such a gesture? Hmm. Okay, I'm thinking... Uh, hmm. It's, I'm thinking that maybe... Maybe... Okay, it seems like Lynette has some sort of amnesia, and Alan has met Lynette in the past. So, like... Is Alan, like, some sort of, like, fallen god or something? Like, is he Hades? <laughs> I mean, Hades was a god and just got put in charge of the underworld. Um, but yeah, it feels like Lynette is, like, maybe remembering him from the past. And, yeah, maybe, maybe that's why, like, Alan is, like, so involved with Lynette. So, I'm just like, this is more questions now. I'm just like, wait, who is he now? Hey, are you listening to me? Huh? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I heard you. Um, just watch out for really bad incubi, right? That's right. If you're not careful, they'll take your soul. Don't ever go near them. Wait, my soul? That's just what demons do, okay? I see. I had no idea. I made a mental note to maybe to go to the library to do some more research. Are there really that many incubi? When it comes to God, there, gods, there isn't more than one type of each, you know. I'm the only Cupid and there's no other Venus or Mars or anything like that. I mean... <laughs> She's not just the only Cupid, she's the 87th Cupid, but I guess she doesn't know that in this route. Well, there are plenty of Incubi out there. Of course, most of them aren't nearly as powerful as a god. But either way, just stay away from us demons. Never let your guard down, understand? R right. I understand. For some reason... Who just done something so awful himself? He seems pretty serious about this whole thing. I just nodded, seemingly satisfied. Alan gave me a gentle smile. Anyway, why don't we have some breakfast? I made it while you were still sleeping. Okay. <laughs> How nice! Making breakfast. <laughs> he got up and headed for the kitchen. When he was gone, I looked at my phone. It was only 5 in the morning, but I still had gone to bed early last night, so I still slept for quite a while. Huh? I opened up my usual apps and saw one comment that said, I had such an incredible dream! How can I ever go back to my real boyfriend when, it was, when he was so much better in my dream? Uh, well, that, that's a... That would uh, destroy his ego, like dream he was so much better in bed. Bleh. <laughs> 
Uh, can't can't mix up dreams with reality though. That must be the same woman who had their dream eaten by Alan. I quickly punched uh, in dream as a keyword and a bunch of similar posts popped up. The dream was better than any real man. I've never felt anything like it. I think my boyfriend isn't enough anymore. Rip. All the posts are like this. This incubus in his dreams were obviously causing problems in the real world. This is bad. If people are having dreams like that, reality will definitely stop mattering to them. It's gonna drive down the marriage rates. It's your fault, Alan. I was sure about that, because I'd experienced it firsthand. As Cupid, I have to be aware of the dangerous power of the incubus. Thanks for waiting. Alan came back from the kitchen with breakfast. But there was only enough food for one person. Huh? Is this all for me? That's right. I don't actually eat. Huh? I told you. An incubus feasts on dreams, right? So I don't have to eat anything else. Sometimes I have to order in to avoid suspicion. But the only flavor I'm really familiar with is tapioca. Oh, the bubble tea. <laughs> what does he do after eating it? Does he have to, like, yarp it up? <laughs> is he like Edward Cullen? Like, eats food, but, like, it doesn't digest? What? I suddenly remembered what had happened on our mock date. I recalled that part of our dinner was bubble tea, which has tapioca in it. At that time, I wondered why anyone would want just bubble tea for dinner. I see. As an incubus, Alan doesn't need to eat the same things as humans. When I was in Celestia, I never had to eat anything either. So gods and demons both can go without the human idea of eating. What about drinking? <laughs> oh, it seems like like the gods like to drink wines. There's a whole there's a whole god of wine up there. But once I came down here, my body be became completely human. But does tapioca even have that much of a flavor? It seems strange that, of all human food, the only thing you could taste was tapioca. During college, Gil cooked all kinds of foods for me, so I feel like my taste buds are pretty in line with normal human ones. I think some places add sugar to the drink, but the main point is to enjoy the chewy texture. No, no. You don't understand. Sweet. Spicy. Whatever. I can't taste any of it. I have to assume a base on human reactions. And the strongest reaction is always bubble tea. So if I had to describe the tapioca balls, they're definitely sour. Huh? When a girl sucks on the straw and their cheeks suck in... <laughs> it's the same face people make with something sour. Like a lemon. I think that's just... That's just how they, they suck up the liquid and the, and the tapioca balls. Every time I see a girl with bubble tea, she makes that face. So tapioca must be sour, right? Isn't that just the face you make when you suck on a straw? <laughs> okay. he's, he's just making assumptions. But yeah, he doesn't actually know how it tastes. Or something like those bubble tea face exercise memes you see on Instagram sometimes. Is that a thing? I mean, if you like suck on a straw really hard, it could look like something else, but let's not go that way. <laughs> that sour flavor tastes just like a dream. Which is why tapioca is the only human food I actually enjoy. Although... It's kind of strange that I don't get the same reaction from lemon-flavored stuff. For some reason, Alan was convinced that tapioca was sour. Okay, I think he's, he's confusing sweet and sour. His taste buds really are totally different from a human's. After all, tapioca definitely isn't sour. And you can't learn something's taste just based on someone else's reaction. But in that case, the taste of a dream must not be sour either. Is it more sweet? What is what is dream's flavor? It can like feel nice, but does it have a flavor? Anyway, that's why I don't eat. 
so it's all yours. Besides, I'm still full from that delicious dream of yours. Go ahead, dig in. Thank you. At his urging, I looked down at the meal in front of me. After everything he'd said, I had to work up the courage to start eating. I couldn't help but wonder what kind of food someone who thinks tapioca is sour would make. With a little hesitation, I took a bite of rice. Huh? This is delicious. That's good. Kind of, okay, that's surprising. Yeah, you gotta have to be a good cook. You probably want to like be able to taste your own cooking so you can like adjust accordingly. Despite his inability to actually taste anything, he was actually a really good cook. You'd think those wouldn't go together, but I don't know, maybe, maybe he's just really good at following recipes. Still, the meal was nothing but vegetables, and not that much of them either. I could tell it wouldn't be enough. Um, so Alan, do you only ever eat in order to, in order to avoid suspicion? Uh-huh. Human food has absolutely no benefit for an incubus. I'll eat when I have to in order to seem like a normal human. But ultimately, it's a completely meaningless act. I don't gain any nutrition. I can't taste it. And if I do it too much, I'm sure to gain weight. So I avoid it whenever I can. I mean, doesn't, isn't weight technically nutrition? Like, it's some sort of substance, so... So you're really not human in any way at all. Like I said, I'm an incubus. I didn't eat any of my food the entire time at Parasite House. So by the end of it, I was completely starving. Oh, my food meaning dreams. Didn't want to just like dive into some of the dude's dreams. So afterward, I went on a bit of a binge and got myself kicked out of Cupid Corp because of it. So now I need to find a new source. Oh, that's right. You got a whole bunch of member relationships to fall apart. I mean, Lynette's like, all right, I'm mad. I'm sorry to hear that. But if that's all it took, there must have not have been too much of their love. No, that's not it at all. It's just that your dreams are so intense. Hmm, is that right? Yes, that's right. Recalling the dream I had last night. I can feel myself getting nervous all over again. That's how amazing his dreams were. A dream that feels so good you never want it to end. A dream more satisfying than reality. Specifically. Specifically because it's not real. Yeah, I could totally understand how someone might neglect their real life love in favor of that kind of dream world. <laughs> Does he ever visit like the same woman twice though? Like they're gonna just... They're gonna shun reality for the dream but probably never have that dream again. I decided that it was my duty to minimize the damage he caused from here on out. Uh, serve him a meal or try to make him understand. It says to serve him a meal. Are we just gonna like serve- Lynette's gonna serve herself on a silver platter. All right. So listen up, Alan. From now on, you can only eat my dreams. <laughs> huh? What are you talking about? After a moment, a bewitching smile formed on his lips, as if he suddenly realized something. Ah, I see. You had such an incredible dream last night. You don't want to live in this reality anymore. Why not just tell me directly that's what you meant, or what you want? Is our darling really so shy? Hearts. Okay, <laughs> correct answer. I think she's just... I think she's just sacrificing herself to make sure that he doesn't go after other women. No! If you keep eating the dreams of women in love, people will stop falling in love altogether. And I can't do my job as Cupid. I'm the god of love, and I can't let gods or demons or anyone go around destroying those connections. I can't expect you to stop eating entirely, so instead I want you to only eat my dreams. That way I can protect everyone's love. Okay. Well, she met with like a, an interesting compromise. Instead of just offing the demon that's like going against her, she's just like, I'll just feed you. <laughs> I guess that's a Lynette response to just sacrifice herself. He gave me a serious look and shook his head. I'm afraid I can't do that. 
why not? Despite the desperation in my voice, he laughed and gave me a sly look. Because the dreams of a girl in love are far more delicious. So I hope you fall in love. Then I'd be happy to share. What? I mean, how, how did you give her dreams before? Like, she did dream of, like, someone. She just didn't know who it was. There's that thieving parasite attitude again. Before I found out he was an incubus, I thought maybe he got through some kind of trauma. Oh. Oh, uh, this angry person. Hey, Alan Melville, get out here! Hmm? I heard a banging on the door from the outside. I know you're in there! Get your miserable ass out here! Ugh, this again. Again? Don't tell me. I had flashbacks of a call I'd gotten from a man claiming his woman had been stolen from him. Did you seriously steal another girl? How could you even think that? We just had dinner. <laughs> so you did! You stole away another woman in love! It's just my nature, you know. You can't really complain about someone following their instincts. Alan just shrugged his shoulders and looked downstairs. Going around yelling this early in the morning is very impolite. I'll go take care of this. You just finish your breakfast. Waving a relaxed hand at me, Alan headed downstairs into the store. I quickly finished off the last of my breakfast and followed him down. Oh, showdown! Okay, okay, stop yelling. It's not like I'm going anywhere. I'm gonna kick your ass! Uh-oh. <laughs> Alan was immediately greeted with a powerful blow. The man struck him with so much force, Alan went flying into the store counter. Melville, you thieving bastard! How dare you lay your filthy hands on my wife! The man's face was bright red, but Alan's expression was unchanged. Ah, uh, you must be the guy for the apartment next door. <laughs> oh no, you did that to your neighbors. <laughs> but you're mistaken. I never laid a finger on your wife. There's been no infidelity here. That's bullshit. Ever since, ever since you invited her into your little bachelor pad, she doesn't want anything to do with me. I didn't invite her anywhere. I simply recommended her a pillow from my store. If she's rejecting you, you have nobody to blame but yourself. If her dreams are better, then you must not be worthy. Don't play stupid with me! Another blow and Alan fell backward again. Is he just gonna take it? He's just taking the beating. Alan wasn't making any attempt to stop the man from hitting him. He just wiped the blood from his split lip and looked at him in silence. His eyes were calm. Empty. No matter how many times the man hit him, Alan would clearly never apologize for what he'd done. The man seemed to sense this and took a nervous step back. Anyway, I hope you learned your lesson. This <laughs> is remorseless. I think that one should have just made him more mad. To show that, like, Alan has no remorse for, for making his, his wife leave him. The man fled from the store just as quickly as he arrived. He slammed the door angrily behind him, and I flinched back nervously. That was so scary. Um, are you okay? Island looked just the same as ever, calm and collected with a placid smile on his face. That kind of thing happens all the time, but I appreciate your concern, our darling. Happens all the time. My first impulse was to yell at him, but the fact is I was worried about his cut lip and swelling face. I'm sure you would have avoided those punches if you really wanted to. Alan was way taller and probably a lot stronger than the guy who came after him. I know he's a, he's a demon. He could have could have done demon things to him. And yet he just stood there and let it happen. Probably, probably because he knew it would make the guy feel better. I guess that's how you have to get by when you're a demon. Still, I was sure he was in pain. Let me see where he hit you. 
Where's your first aid kit? Huh? It's, uh, over there on the shelf. Good. Now sit down and let me pat you up. I grabbed the first aid kit and started to take care of him. Jeez, this cut is really deep. Are you sure you're okay? Um, yeah. I mean, I guess. He looked confused and a little troubled. I'm sure he wasn't expecting to get this kind of special attention. Lynette, Lynette, Lynette's worried about everyone. Even if he's a demon. I thought you were mad at me. I am, but that has nothing to do with this. I just can't ignore someone who's in pain. As I continued to work on him without hesitation, Alan frowned at me. Ow. Hey, you're being a little rough, don't you think? You deserve the beating you got, so just deal with it. Now hold still. I deserved it. But I was just trying to give her a good night's sleep. <laughs> These dreams of your yours are better than reality, you know. Can't you ease off a little bit? If you were able to make incredible food, would you go out of your way to make something bad? If my food was bad for the rest of the world... His total lack of remorse made me mad all over again. I applied the cut ointment without mercy, then checked his back and hips for bruises where he'd hit the counter. I'm sure you don't want any more guys coming in with scores to settle, do you? Obviously, I prefer that, but at this point, I've learned to live with it. I know demons that have done way worse things than me. Relatively speaking, I'm one of the good ones. A good one, huh? After all the women you've stolen. I just don't understand it. That's because in the world you live in, you don't have to understand. His tone had suddenly turned cold. And he stood up before I was finished. Hey, wait! I'm not finished! You've done enough. Usually I don't need any kind of treatment at all. Huh? I'm a demon, remember? Whatever injuries I get heal far faster than any humans. So you really don't have to be doing any of this. I don't need it. With a bitter tone and a look of self-loathing, Alan walked away. He doesn't need it. Alan, an incubus. He always has some sort of justification for what he does. But could it really be that he really doesn't want to do it? He was putting back the chairs and other items he scattered when he got knocked around. He is facing away from me, so I had no idea what look might be on his face. But even so, I had a distinct sense of loneliness. I kind of I kind of regretted placing so much blame on him. However. Oh, back to work. You're leaving? Female keeper court member. Yes, I'm very sorry, but all of a sudden, I just don't care about marriage anymore. Oh, Alan, look what you've done. If you don't mind, may I ask why? <laughs> I decided it would be better to get a pillow to keep me company instead of continuing to look for a partner. Oh, I'm just going to get a... <laughs> what are they called? The Daki Bakaras? <laughs> going to get a pillow boyfriend. <laughs> a pillow? C could it be? There's a store on 9th Avenue called Pillow Luxuria. If you get a pillow from there, you'll have the most amazing dreams. I knew it. Dreams are so wonderful. They never betray you, and they always show you at your very best. <laughs> like, I, I prefer 2D men than 3D. Compared to that, reality is just... I mean, my last dozen of blind dates have been complete failures. I'm sorry. I guess I wasn't much help then. No, no, it's fine. I know you did your best. After all, this is the reality we live in, right? But at the end of the day, I'd rather trade my reality for a lovely dream. <laughs> Just give up on reality. Oh. 
So that's what I'm gonna do from now on. Thank you for everything you've done, but I'm canceling my membership as of today. Well, at least she's cordial about it. That happened not once, not twice, but three times in a row. Alan, you're gonna make us go out of business. Sitting there by myself, I dropped my head in my hands. In one day, we lost three members, all women. The reason was that dreams are better, and they all bought pillows from Pillow Luxuria, of course. What am I gonna do? They'd all bought pillows from the same place, so there could be only one reason behind all this. A demon that feeds on the dreams of his female victims, an incubus. There's no doubt that it was Alan. Now, now she's gonna be like, I gotta... I gotta protect my job. I gotta get that promotion. I gotta stop Alan. So here, let me just serve you my dreams. What is an incubus really? Do they really have no choice but the feast on dreams to survive? I was curious, so I did a quick search on my phone. Everything I found pretty much said the same thing. An incubus is a specific type of creature, a demon that feeds on dreams. If that's the best the internet has to offer, I'll just have to do more research of my own. Luckily, I had the following day off. I decided to head to the university library and look for more specialized literature. Maybe we could consult Raul? He likes mythology. <laughs> you might have read something about Incubi. Ah, that's right. Well, Zurich University also has a professor of mythology. Maybe I'll get in touch and set up an appointment. When I was in school, I took a mythology class. My old resume should have his contact info on it. I decided to send him an email as soon as I got home. With that settled, I focus on finishing the rest of my tasks for the day, with hopes of helping my remaining members get married. Oh, Alan? Ah, uh, what? Whoa! What the? Okay. Uh, is this his true form? Wow. Also, I wonder, does he have a... Kind of wanted to pan out a bit. I see, like, the fuzziness that was on his, like, shirt is now, like, down below. D it, does he look like a satyr? With, like, the fa the, with, like, the fuzzy, the fuzzy legs? The fuzzy goat legs? <laughs> I kind of, I, I want to see how he looks. Now then. That evening, I was searching for my next meal. I was looking down on humanity from atop a tall building. Scouring the city for a woman in love to deliver a dream to. A woman in love. Ah, she might be a good fit. I spotted a woman sitting alone outside a cafe, drinking a cup of coffee. I'm sure she must be in love. Her dream would probably be sour and a little spicy with a rich aftertaste. I hope she can become like that soon too. Lynette. She just completely refused to fall in love. I wanted her to fall in love as soon as possible. Dem but no matter what I did, there was no sign of that happening. As soon as I thought of her, I suddenly lost my appetite and started to sigh. I need to take care of this problem before I feast. I decided to let the other Parasite 5 take up falling in love with her and seducing her. But they're not very good at it, and some of them aren't interested in love in the first place. While we were on Parasite House, I was constantly working behind the scenes to get them to fall in love with her. <laughs> Is that why you like strip down a gill? <laughs> You're like, look, look at them apples, look at what you can have on display. Take your pick. Choose the sausage. <laughs> uh, that was a weird scene. For example, I worked together with that workshop instructor behind the scenes to have her go out on those mock dates. Uh, what was that lady's name again? Okay, I guess that's why Lynette had to go on all those practice dates. Uh, that would be weird for, like, someone to do that with their client, to, like, go out with them. I feel like that's, that's breaching some sort of policy. And I planted the idea for that ad agency guy to take pictures that would make her look like she was Shelby's wife. I even snuck into Los York TV studio to try and get the Parasite House project off the ground. And of course I did everything I could to make sure no female members would move into the house. 
Okay, he's working behind the scenes the whole time. I lived in the house, went on dates that I had to, and have absolutely nothing to show for it. Nobody made any moves. Nothing happened to make her care about any of the other guys at all. Normally, when you live together with a bunch of guys, you're bound to click with someone, right? My plan was a total failure. She was much tougher nut to crack than I'd expected. I wanted her to hurry up and fall in love so she can get rid of that damn bow of hers. I didn't get the reaction I was hoping for when I pretended to be Gil. So maybe next time I'll try Shelby. Okay. <laughs> Gonna impersonate all the dudes, but she's not interested on in this route at least. Uh, so was he like, was he just hovering around Lynette, like waiting for the, waiting for the bow and arrow necklace to fall off? Did he like nab it in the other routes? Like what did he do with it? Like why does he need it? I can sneak into his office and make it so that you'll have to take notice of her. And once the seed was planted, I can ask one of my succubus friends to make him dream about her. Incubi and succubi. Demons that can take on the form of whoever their dreamer truly desires. Us demons can make matches by pretending to be their object of desire in a dream and make them fall in love. To be honest, I wish I could handle all this myself. But an incubus simply isn't able to enter a man's dreams. Oh, okay. So he can't just like switch forms back and forth. Uh, <laughs> I'm guessing that's why he got Claris to help? But Claris is so nice! <laughs> I thought maybe- I remember at the beginning I was like, maybe- maybe Claris and Alan are the same person. And they're just like, the incubus and the succubi are like the same- the same uh, entity? Because I've heard like- some mythology saying that like an incubi and a succubi, they they could just change forms. They could turn into an incubus and to sleep with a woman, and then they transform into a succubi to sleep with a man, and they just kind of like transfer seed that way, and then like the resulting child is like thought to be a demon, but I don't know. It just seems like an excuse for cheating. But <laughs> it's like I swear I didn't do that. An incubi did it. It only looks like that man because. The succubus went into his- went to him and, and took his seed. I don't know, it's weird mythology stuff. It was frustrating, but I had to rely on my fel fellow succubi. Anyway, I just need to find a way to make Shelby fall in love with her. Then I'll have my meal. Okay, just gonna- gonna go down the list of guys. <laughs> I- I guess we like- was living with Gil for so long. Might as well just call it a lost cause at this point. Haven't, hasn't fallen in love yet. Oh, oh, what was that? You have little black wings. First, I would, I would just arrive. I would just arrange his schedule so that he'd have to meet with Lynette. If I could make them think, I've been seeing, seeing a lot of them lately. That could definitely lead to victory. So I snuck into Mr. President's office, but there was absolutely no room in his schedule. He was a workaholic and slept only four hours every day. I had to give up on that plan. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay well, scrap Shelby. Works too much. Can he just, like, take something off the schedule? Or would that be too suspicious? The next day. Oh wow, this chapter's going for a while. After setting up an appointment, I had come to see Pro Professor Gior Giordano, G Giordano, who was teaching a mythology class. So, actually, I was hoping to talk to you about Incubi. Professor Giordano. Uh, should I even give it a voice? Hmm, you're interested in suc in Incubi specifically, not Succubi? Succubi? An Incubus eats a woman's dreams while a Succubus eats the dreams of men. Both are demons, of course. They're, they seem kind of related. <laughs> Talk about both. <laughs> oh, really? So an Incubus can only eat a woman's dreams? That's right. That must be why all those female members quit. Um... Well, for now, could you tell me more about Incubi? Of course, to be honest, the only real difference between an Incubus and a Succubus is their gender. 
They both bring humans pleasure in order to feed on their dreams and both appear as the person's idealized partner. Idealized? Indeed, in order to bring them even more pleasurable dreams, you see. That's why there's no descriptions for their appearance. Because they appear differently to everyone. If an incubus were to eat your dreams, would it affect reality in any, in any way? Hmm, it depends on the lore being referred to. Sometimes it's just a dream eater, but sometimes there's real harm involved. Real harm? An incubus is a demon that leads humans down the path of depravity. Especially. Essentially, they love the art of seduction. Some texts say that they can actually change a human's body. Some have even been known to impregnate their victims in their sleep. Yeah, so that's the one I've heard about. What? But it's probably just another story designed to cover up adultery. Not much evidence, to be honest. Okay, yeah. Usually. If, if, it, if the child is technically human. It's kind of sucks for the child, though, to just be reviled, reviled as a demon. Even though it's not their fault. Just people making up stuff. Other texts claim that the lore was invented to cover up cases of nocturnal emissions in the days of asceticism. <laughs> but do demons actually exist or no? I think that's certainly worth discussing as well. Well, there really are demons though. As I left Professor Giordano, I was alone in the courtyard, thinking about what I just heard. An incubus appears in the form of the ideal person. Hmm, thought about the dream. Wh who did she dream about? That's my ideal? It didn't hit me at all. Seeing him didn't really- didn't make me feel nervous or dreamy. What I- did was definitely amazing, but he's not really my type. The professor said I should consider the reasons for the Lord's origins against the original historical background. So after I parted with the professor, I went to the library to borrow some books. I'm gonna read every book I can find on demons. However... Hmm... Take a quick look at the book I just checked out, but nothing was satisfying. Azazel, Maloch, and Me Me that's a big word, Mephistopheles. All the demons are depicted in their forms with a frightening appearance. I've never seen anything like it. It looks a bit like the manticore that we have at Celestia. <laughs> okay, gonna, gonna pull up that, that, that throwback. Incubus is a demon, but Alan is very different from the demons depicted here. I flipped through the pages and read the stories of what demons had done. The story of a man who made a pact with a demon to resurrect the dead, and a story of a man who tried to become a billionaire. All these chapters are quite disturbing. One spoke of a demon that awaited you at the gates of Elysium, then stole your soul. So this is a demon, different from a god, an evil being. That's why it's so easy for us to fool people and feed on their dreams. Of course, some of us do much worse. You should consider yourself lucky. Not all incubi are as nice as I am. You? Nice? How the heck are you nice? If a really bad demon got his hands on you, he wouldn't stop at just taking your dreams. Trust me, I'm an angel in comparison. A good incubus. But from a Cupid's point of view, any incubus that gets in the way of love is bad. Uh, how oh, hi, Raul. Demons, you're reading an interesting book. Huh? I looked up and Raul was there. <laughs> Maybe he might know more. <laughs> Ask him. Huh? Why are you here? We were just discussing the similarities between demons and gods. So if you're interested, I should have invited you too. Mythology debate and demon talks? Demons are supposed to be different from gods, so why do we talk about them in mythology debates? Are demons like gods? 
I chilled in my head, and Roll snatched the book I was holding and started reading. I think so. There's a god similar to an incubus. It's called Baku, and it eats dreams to ward off sickness and bad luck. There are other similarities between, between gods and demons, such as Satan, the King of Hell, and Lucifer, a former angel. Well, I'm pretty sure Satan is not an ex-angel. It's just horrible just thinking about it. <laughs> Satan is an oyster. Roll returns the book to me and walks away. What Roll thinks of as Satan is probably a raw oyster. He was shivering and shaking from his memories of raw oysters. I looked down at the open page on the book. Incubus, a demon that eats dreams. But according to Raoul, there's also a god who eats dreams. And he also said that Satan was formerly an angel, right? I check out the section on Satan, Lucifer. It was written that an angel who thought he was worthy of being a god, rebelled and incurred God's wrath, and was cast to hell. Hmm. I didn't know there were angels like that. Angels are the ones in heaven, right? Below Celestia, where the gods dwell, lies heaven, home of the angels. Oh, okay, there's like another layer. <laughs> I've never been there since only the 12 Olympians can go to heaven. But there are demons who are angels, and some demons have the same powers as gods. They're like inverted. They're mirror, they're mirror images. Perhaps the gods that do good things are called gods, and the gods that commit evil are called demons. Heck! Dad could, could be called a demon. Mar is the god of war. Dad's stories aren't necessarily always good for humans. Demons. As I flipped through the pages, my eye caught a demon called Fulfur. Fulfur? <laughs> huh? A matchmaking demon. The book said that it was a demon that caused love between men and women. They basically lie, but if you summon them into a magic circle, they'll tell you the truth. Some demons do good things. Getting more and more confused. I took another look at the pile of books I had borrowed. There was one book mixed in that had nothing, do nothing to do with the demons. Huh? It's a book on mythology. I must have borrowed it by mistake. The book was called Greek Myths Love Episodes. I was so curious I had to read it. It was about dad and mom's love story, Jupiter's love story, and Cupid's love. Cupid's love, huh? It said that Cupid accidentally wounded his own finger with an arrow and fell in love with Psyche, a human being. Of course, I don't remember such an episode. So weird. Cupid would never hurt her own finger with an arrow. I would never screw up like that, and I don't even know who Psyche is. It must be a story that humans made up on their own. Otherwise, there's no explanation. I closed the book and left for the university. <laughs> that Cupid, that klutzy Cupid. <sighs> Alright, Alan in the park. A few days later, I caught a glimpse of the daily lives of the Parasite 5 and sighed deeply. What's wrong with them? <laughs> the likelihood of any of them falling in love with Lynette was significantly low. Except for Gil. <laughs> even, even he's like, they're too much of a fixer-upper. <laughs> Roll Aconite, for one reason or another, found himself unsuitable for serious love. Yuki F. Kesain was no longer aware of her existence. Perhaps because his work was no longer relevant with her. <laughs> Yeah, you get grades faces. You only saw Lynette as like being okay to like talk to just for work purposes, but other than that, you would never approach her. And Shelby gave up on marriage. He said he would live for work. I remember being horrified at the sight of Shelby working like a madman. I think Owen was in love with another girl. Oh, was he trying to. Like the secretary? How about the secretary? <laughs> Gil was the only hope. The best thing to do is to somehow try to get him closer to her. But Gil said he wouldn't see her until he was worthy of her. Then make him worthy. It's true that if Gil was, were to confess his feelings to her now, he would be shattered. The problem was on her end. If only I could look like Gil in her dreams. 
that way I could seduce her to my heart's content. Yeah, but she's not she's not in love with Gil. Doesn't see him doesn't see him that way at all. Who she saw in her dreams was not Gil, Shelby, Ruki, or Raul. Who was it? I believe she said he was a blonde guy. I mean Gil and Raul are blonde. Is there any other man she's close to? Think of the people around her, I shake my head. Her co-workers, her neighbors, she didn't seem to be aware of them at all. So far, the only guys she had talked to at length were the four guys at Parasite 5. As Cupid, she can't abandon the Parasite 5 and must be concerned about them. But it's not love, it's just work. She's a workaholic too. So no office romance occurred. Her male colleagues even looked at her with a kind of awe. By human standards, she should be considered a tryhard who's obsessed with promotion. So she's not a love interest at all, making Gil the only choice. Next time I see her, I'll try to talk to her and steer her attention towards Gil. Please, Gil. It's on you. If I fail now, there's nothing else that can be done. That's how few options she has in terms of love interests. He's so involved with her. <laughs> then a few days later. Ah, oh, this chapter's really long. <laughs> Are we not like makes me think like, did the next chapter happen? I just didn't notice. <laughs> Staff members from the advisor section were drinking coffee together. Recently, there's so many people quitting saying that reality doesn't matter anymore. Your members too? I've had this happen before. The reason those characters and dramas are better. It's called actor mania, but this one, this one's weird. Everyone says they prefer dreams. A dream better than reality. It's like, I'd like to have a dream like that too, if it's that good. Dream, huh? I wonder if some kind of secret word, like for a club or drugs. Huh? Isn't it just simply dreams you have when you sleep? No, <laughs> no, <laughs> do I like mix up the voices? <laughs> no way, it's not normal for people to think that dreams are better than reality. It's not magic. I'm curious, a dream better than reality? That's why more and more female members are quitting. Chi, what should we do? Chi? Chi, do you know of, a de of demons called incubi? Chi? Chi? Chi tilted his head and looked up. That moment, the, do the door opened. God, <laughs> I'm going out. Good night. Another night out? Without replying, Clarice puts her finger to her lips and winks. Then she left the room, waving her hands in the air. Uh, I think she's going out to feed on men. A few moments later, I heard the front door close. She's gone. Clarice is like this almost every day. She seems to be going out with a lot of different men. Clarice doesn't fall in love and her members say they prefer dreams. Cupid needs to work hard. Cupid, the god of love. I have a weapon that even gods fear. With this, I'm not afraid of demons. I'm a god and I have to fight an incubus, a demon. I must, in order to prevent this bizarre phenomenon from ruin ruining Cupid Corp's reputation. Humans don't believe in gods or demons. Is she gonna just like shoot Alan? It's like, don't worry, I'm a god, I got this, put your ham. But she doesn't want to use her arrows, except in emergencies. I guess she might consider this an emergency. She's like, well, I can't really stop him as a human, so I'll stop him as a god. But it's the duty of the gods to protect humans. Human hands make human bonds. As long as it doesn't have anything to do with that goal, I can use my arrows, right? Oh no, she's gonna shoot Alan. I'm worried that the jamming method that my aunt used might wear off, but I can sneak back to Celestia to have it fixed again. I took my fingers off the necklace and instead grabbed Chi. Chi? Then as usual, I used Chi as a massager. <laughs> Poor Chi. 
All right, next next chapter. There we go. That was a lot. That was a long one. Cupid in love is the next chapter. Oh, is this okay? There's a, there's a flashback to Celestia, but we're gonna end things off here because we've been going for a very long time. Okay, we're getting a lot of a lot of lore, a lot of character background on Alan. I'm not sure how to feel about him. Like, at first it seems kind of slimy, but it seems like he actually cares. About, uh... About Lynette? I'm just... I'm just not sure, like... What's his goal here? But we're, we're just at the beginning, we're just... This, this is just like the first two chapters and I'm just already confused. Alright, so... I'll take a little breaky break. I need to eat, but not on dreams. I need food. I need real human food. Also, Clarice does seem to act... She's better at acting like a normal person than Alan is. Um, she does eat like... She does eat meals. She like wines and dines with... With Lynette. I don't know. Can like some demons eat? Or does... Or does she have to like yarp it up too? <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> or does she gain weight because of it? She seems... She seems really skinny though, so it's not like she's putting on... Putting on pounds. I don't know. Maybe, maybe she could like... Maybe she can eat food just fine. Maybe there's like... Different incubi and succubi. Like, like in uh... And then Twilight. There's like that human vampire hybrid. It's like, it can both eat... And drink blood. The best of both worlds. All right, well, anywho, take a little break. I hope you guys are having a fun time with this. I'm having a fun time with this. Like, I'm, in I'm intrigued. I love the I love the mythology bits and the the fantasy, the fantasy uh, es esqueness of it. Right. Well, I hope you guys are having a fun time, and I'll see you in the next episode. Oh, bye bye.